Welcome to Week in Geek. I'm Mike Ortiz. I'm the Chris Brown. And uh, you may know us from the Zod Complex podcast at zodcomplex.com. But we are here at, where are we, Chris? We're at Comics and More, located at 28059 John R. Road, Madison Heights, Michigan, 48071. To bring you, as Mike said, the Week in Geek, uh, and for book shipping on uh, March 9th. Yep, so uh, we're going to give you a little sneak peek at what's coming out today, which you can expect to find in your comic book stores. Yeah, good and, morning uh, and welcome to New Comics Day. And Chris, uh, what, are you, uh, what are you looking at this week? Well, let's see here. I guess let's, let's start first with uh, a, a little surprise, I guess. A little surprise for me. I was uh, shocked how much I enjoyed this. Marvel uh, reintroduces its cross-gen books this week. Um, you know, Disney bought cross-gen years ago, uh, mostly because they wanted a bad as ad, and then here now they bought a superhero company, and they want to do something with it. I was shocked. Here's Sigil, Sigil number one, uh, on your shelves today. I really liked it. It has this, I'd never read the book for Cross Gen, but it sort of has this uh, little bit of a Morning Glories feel with, uh, you know, you got a young girl, she's kind of going through something, there's a mystery, we don't know what, she's got a birthmark that plays in, but just the whole teenage girl thing in a school kind of reminded me uh, of, of kind of a Morning Glories vibe. And then uh, there's pirates. Can't be pirates. You can't be pirates. You are. So, yeah, Sigil. Sigil uh, was very good today. Uh, what, do you, what do you got? What are you looking at? Well, uh, you know, my, uh, my most intriguing thing this week is also kind of a throwback to the past. Venom number one. Um, this is the first Venom comic I've ever bought. I never... You never succumbed in the 90s? I never, uh, I never I was bought dumb and a teenager. Maybe that was, that was all yeah, me. I, I, was, I was not, uh, not really into Spider-Man. I certainly didn't okay. care for Venom right. much. And when I heard they were doing a new Venom book, I, I laughed until I saw Rick Remender and Tony Moore. Yeah. Yep. Now, I nev I've never read Fear Agent. Um, Neither have I. But I've, I've heard great things about them. I certainly have loved Tony Moore's work uh, on Walking Dead and various other things. Absolutely. And uh, I've, I've really liked a lot of Remender stuff since he's come to Marvel. I haven't tried all of it, but I've tried a lot of it. Uh, so those two were kind of... Uh, they kind of got me on the fence, and then when oh, I sure. heard the premise, how this is no longer Eddie Brock, that this is basically Flash Thompson uh, as a superhero super spy, um, for me that was enough to give it a shot. Uh, I did check out that Spider-Man uh, one issue that was really okay. a, a Venom Zero issue. I haven't and, uh, read that yet. I, I thought it was, uh, was pretty interesting. It seemed like a, an interesting premise. Okay. So uh, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I'm, I've, I've got it in my stack as well. Kind of excited to read it. Um, I'm not the biggest Venom fan in the world, but it's all, honestly, for me, it was the Tony Moore. Everyone says good things about uh, Rick Remender, and I've never really read anything. Um, uh, Chad, our fellow uh, Zod Complex cohort, was all about Frankencastle. Mm. I know he was very much about that book. So, yeah, I think it's going to be fun, and uh, I, I wasn't too sure how I felt about uh, Flash Thompson losing his legs a couple years ago when they chose to do that story. Mm. Just, like... It was a great story. It was a fantastic story. But the man has had brain damage. They've done all these things to him and didn't really know what to do with him. Yeah. Now it looks like that loss of legs is going to work. They're going to do something with very, it. So. Uh, very interesting premise. And uh, uh, I like how they've, they've shaken things up. They, they took the Venom symbiote away from Eddie Brock, gave it to Matt Gargan uh, quite a while ago. Which was and, interesting. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a, a neat change of pace. And now uh, giving it to Flash Thompson really changes things a lot, so hopefully this will be a, an interesting new direction for the character. They Well, they've made the suit a character, which yeah. I like. I mean, where for the longest time, yeah, it just wasn't, I don't know, felt, I felt like it was flat with, with Eddie Brock, but uh, yeah, let's, let, well, I guess we'll find out. This yeah. is one I haven't gotten to yet. What else, uh, what else are you looking for this week? Um, well, of course, uh, you know, uh, I, I always get very excited every week it comes out. Walking Dead, No Way Out, Part 3. Just fantastic stuff. I mean, there was, uh, I'll tell you what, spoiler alert, if you have yet to read uh, Walking Dead, you read it in trades, don't you? So I yeah. probably can't even say anything, can I? I'll forget everything. Something big happened in the last issue with uh, with Morgan, and we were we were freaking out a little bit. And they come back to that. I'm really uh, kind of interested in the way they do it. And everybody's freaking out a little bit. You know, uh, Morgan has a very interesting conversation with Carl. Um, apparently, uh, Rick is not the only person that knows... Uh, uh, 
what Carl had to do a few issues ago with the other uh, young boy. You're trying so hard not to spoil it. I'm trying not to say anything, but there's an interesting discussion with that. Um, and there are some of our characters who are considering just bailing on everybody and leaving. Because they're, you know, the zombies have invaded this little town they live in yet again. You know, there can be no peace, really. Uh, great story, just fantastic stuff. Really, really enjoyed it. Walking Dead, uh, Walking Dead eighty two. Um, great, great book, fun book. Uh, also, one thing I do want to point out: uh, yesterday saw the release of The Walking Dead on DVD and Blu ray. Oh, there you uh, go. All right, pick that up because uh, I designed the cover on that one. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Oh, right on. But look at that, see? And that also is a part of Weekend Geek. Yep. All things geeky in the week. Yep. We want to talk a little comics because, you know, uh, Chris Mitz and Chad don't always want to talk uh, the new comics that mm -hmm. week. I think that's more something we want to do. Yeah. So we're going to talk all kinds of geeky things uh, as this show goes on. You know, tonight a little bit more of a, a beta, as you said. Uh, mm -hmm. Go back and listen to some of those uh, early Zod complexes, or don't. And, uh, and <laughs> finding this, our way. This is so. our first shot here. What else, so what, what do you got over there? What are you looking at? The next thing that I'm looking at is Batman and Robin number 21. Okay. How are yeah. you liking it since Grant Morrison left the book? I, um, you know, I as soon as I found out that Grant was moving to Batman Inc. and uh, and Tomasi and Gleason were taking over this book, I just thought to myself, well, that's kind of nice. It's one more book I can drop. And uh, That was my attitude, and that's exactly what I did, to be honest. I, I picked up the first issue that... Um, there was a three-issue arc Paul Cornell wrote, uh, Scott, oh. Scott McDaniel drew. Yeah, yeah. Picked up the first issue of that. Was not really impressed. Me neither. I had decided then pretty much to drop the book. Then when this, uh, when issue 20, the first issue by Tomasi and Gleason came out last month, um, I, was, I was staring at it. I was looking at it. I, I really, I've been reading Batman Inc. I've been reading Detective. Okay. Uh, I even picked up the Batman Dark Knight book. So I asked myself, do I really need another Batman book? But you know what? I really loved the Green Lantern Corps, and Tomasi and Gleason uh, did a great job okay. on that book. Uh, there were times when I thought it was even superior to the main Green Lantern book. So I figured I'll give it a shot. You know, it's two ninety nine. They're holding the line. Uh, I picked it up, and I loved it. So uh, oh, I'm, cool. I'm back on board. I mean, it's certainly not the Grant Morrison Batman, but we've got something else a little later in the stack for that but uh but if you want just a good solid batman book with with dick grayson um and uh and also i really like damien damien's a great I do character too. um he's a lot of fun and i think gleason's got a good handle on i think it's interesting that he's kind of the little smart mouth jerk off that um jason todd was but somehow it works everybody yeah. doesn't seem to hate damien the way they hated jason todd right or maybe it was just those two dudes with the auto dollar that hated jason todd could but, be could be but uh, yeah that was a book that i i gave up on it too i just mm. didn't i was like ah, you know i don't know but you brought up a very interesting point note to marvel a book that you were ready to drop you actually hung around because it was two ninety nine. It was three ninety nine. I probably would. Well, there's a marvel book in there that is that going for oh it's two ninety nine. but i know you're talking about dropping that too <laughs> So one of these 299s, and we'll get to that in a minute, all right? All right, what else do you got? So another one I've got here, I'm going to go, uh, let's go, you know what, let's go a little DC side. Uh, looking forward to, and, and have already read, uh, Superboy this week. I like this book. I like uh, I like Jeff Lemire's work on, on Sweet Tooth, which I think is a, a really interesting book. Everyone kept talking about how amazing it was, and I, I read the first three issues in a row and thought, I like it. I don't know that it's amazing, but I like it. And as it keeps going on, I really like it. I still don't, it's, it doesn't blow my mind, but I really, really like it. So I was willing to give him a shot on Superboy. And I think it's good. I was liking the Superboy stories they were telling in, uh, what was it, Adventure Comics. Mm -hmm. And then they sort of, you know, they pushed them out for Legion. Right. And I like what's going on. Here we've got a, a first, uh, the, fir the first ever race between Superboy and Kid Flash. Oh, wow. And uh, kind of cool. It was, it was neat. It was a neat story. They managed to kind of work in their friendship and the things that are going on with Connor and Cassie over in Teen Titans. Mm -hmm. And just all of the things that they're doing, Jeff Lemire manages to make work. And it's a, he, he advances the story, and he also manages to advance the characters. And I like it. I think it's a great book. I don't know if you're reading Superboy, but it's uh, fun. I, I've not been. Uh, the, uh, 
I'm kind of surprised. I'm not really reading much in terms of the Superman books these days. I'm reading okay. the Batman books. Are you reading and, action, though? Uh, I am reading action. Action's that's been great. It, but that's not a Superman book. Well, it was, but, but, it's, but it's a Lex but, book. I, it's a uh, fine line. So, yeah, I, did, I, I, I kind of passed on Superboy. I never really read it uh, when the character was created back in okay. the 90s. And uh, it was just one of those. I was, I was reading uh, adventure comics okay. until uh, Jeff Johns left that book and uh, it, it was just one of those books that I just never gave a shot to. Okay. Um, I, I've read Lemire's stuff uh, before. I read uh, God, that book that he did for Top Shelf. Oh, I, I know what you're what talking about now. but I can't think of what it is uh, either. And then I, had I, I just recently read The Nobody uh, okay. the Vertigo graphic novel which was quite good. Um, I picked up the first issue of Sweet Tooth and it was one of those books where I decided, you know, I'm going to give this a shot and trade and then just never got around to it okay. because I don't really buy trades that often. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I think I have the first three right, right <laughs> behind us over here. <laughs> my, uh, my next book is uh, The Incredible Hulk. This is Planet Savage Part 2. Uh, I've actually uh -huh. not read Part 1 yet. And um, I'm probably going to be dropping this book. Uh, I, I really, I really liked it back when Planet Hulk. Uh, oh, sure. Started up. That was that was great stuff. Was not really impressed with World War Hulk. World, was it World War Hulks? World, World War, War Hulk. Hulk. Either one. Yeah. Um, World War Hulk was. It just ended in end well. Yeah, and I really didn't like that. And then I, I was, and it was just a setup for all the Red Hulk stuff, which was just a setup for the next thing, which was just a setup for finally telling stories. Yeah. I was I was surprised how much I liked the Red Hulk. And continue to like the Red Hulk with okay. Jeff Parker on the book, um, but uh, when they brought back the Incredible Hulk, I was kind of iffy on it. I had decided to drop it, but then Paul Pelletier uh, okay. came on as the artist a few issues back. I love his work. I'll read it, even with uh, with horrible stories. Now Dale Eaglesham's on it, and I love Eaglesham on the Fantastic Four. I actually still wish he was drawing it instead of Epting. Um, I think his kind of Kirby vibe fit the Fantastic Four, and it probably fits the Hulk really well, too. I think this looks great as I'm looking at this now, I, especially if you're saying Kirby, yeah, Hulk all day. Yeah, it's, I just, it, it's kind of, I don't know, I, I've, the stories haven't been thrilling me, and the art um, now may not be quite good enough to okay. uh, to keep me going. Uh, like I said, I do still like the, the Red Hulk book, so that'll probably give me my Hulk fix for a while. Okay. Yeah, I, I had been reading it for a minute there, and then when they came out of uh, World War Hulks, I was still reading it, and then I just, yeah, I kind of lost track of it. It just wasn't doing it for me. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try to read this Planet Savage. I guess like anything, you can kind of just jump yeah. on, and that's probably what I'll end up doing because I want to like the Hulk. I love the Hulk actually. I love the character, but uh, it hadn't been good there for a hot minute. The, the Hulk is is, is be, has uh, become a victim of what I think is also starting to happen to Daredevil, which is this. Um, Kind of uh, need for an ongoing big story. Yes. Uh, you know, certainly a lot of the other books are doing that, but you know, when you've got World War Hulk feeding into World War Hulks and Fall of the Hulks or whatever, now there's a whole family of Hulk titles. Uh, they they have a tendency to take something good and then just kind of make a lot of it, and make it bad. And uh, I think if enough people drop it, eventually the Red Hulk book's gonna go away. Maybe they'll fold Parker and Hardman onto the, onto the Incredible Hulk book, and uh, maybe I'll give it a shot then. It hurts me, though, too, because the Hulk is one of those books that I've got a huge collection of. I've pretty okay. much got every issue stretching back to when John Byrne took over in the late oh, okay. 80s, and uh, it's gonna be tough to drop that. Uh, yeah, I, I go through different periods with the Hulk. Sometimes I love them, sometimes I don't. I'm, I'm a different collector than you in that I can read it when it's good and not bother when it's not and just let it go. And you know how bad I feel about having that gap in my collection? Not at all. Mm. I lose zero sleep over it. Because you know what? It probably strengthens my back from not having to lift those five extra comics that I don't want. <laughs> and so... But yeah, I'm, I'm, I might end up giving that a shot, actually. It's kind of funny as you're talking about uh, killing it and I'm looking at that uh, Eagle Shim artwork. I might have to go back an issue and pick that up. I think it looks all right. Nice. So, but that's what we're doing. Maybe we get one of you interested in it. Give it so a shot. We'll, we'll see. Then when it's good, someone tell me. I'll pick it up again. All right, fair enough. That sounds that sounds like all a plan. The right. uh, next thing I got on my docket here is uh, New Avengers. Uh, New Avengers number 10 in today. Um, 
kind of interesting. They're they're definitely uh, starting to introduce a new a new arc. You know that arc that they introduced uh, with the last issue with uh, Nick Fury back in time, sort of assembling this uh, this Avengers team. It's got Craven and Dominic Fortune and. Hmm. Really, sort of interesting and sort of different. Um, uh, Creed, Sabretooth. but then there's also the story that's going on right now with uh, was it Superior? I keep wanting to call her Suspiria. I know that's not her name. Um, and whatever happened to Mockingbird in the last issue? Mocking, all of that to bring Mockingbird back in the Secret Invasion, and then now it looks like they're gonna kill her. Really? Well, I guess we'll find out. We don't know. That's what it looked like in the last issue. They're gonna get to something, but. I don't know. Uh, I think some of the artwork in here looks really great. I know there are people people that really like Howard Chaykin. I don't know that I love him as much as I used to. Mm. Um, I, it, it's it's stylish, you know, but it's really only his artwork in the uh, flashback moments. That's actually a really clever idea. I think Chaykin stuff works really well for the uh, the retro part of that. I would agree with that, and I think for what they're doing with this, it probably does work a little bit better. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I think this book's pretty fun. Yeah, and I uh, I enjoyed it. It's a good read. Definitely pick that up today. Uh, next up for me is Jennifer Blood by Garth Ennis and Adrino Batista. Okay. Um, I, I picked up the first issue kind of on a lark. I was uh, at a comic book store uh, while I was on vacation. I, I had read all of my comics on the plane, and I wanted a little something to okay. read, so I tried a few things I hadn't tried before. Uh, I'm, I'm real hit and miss with Garth Ennis. Uh, Preacher and, and uh, Punisher, I love those books sure. tremendously. A lot of the stuff that he's done outside of his mainstream work uh, has been hit and miss. I've, I've liked some of the stuff for Avatar. Um, but this just seemed like Garth Ennis getting back to just someone someone who just wants to shoot people up. And uh, I tried it. It was pretty entertaining. Certainly feels like it could be a movie pitch. Okay. Um, you know, suburban housewife by day and, and you know, killer by night. It's, not, it's right. nothing original, uh, but it's got an interesting take. The artwork is pretty nice, and uh, it's it's Garth Ennis having fun killing and maiming and mutilating people. And, and uh, he seems to have fun doing that. that. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've been giving that a shot also as, as part of a, a desire to kind of pick up more uh, independent books, more creator-owned books, things like that. And that's something we've talked about on Zod Complex. Mention. Yep, exactly. That's uh, part of my thing about making sure to get at least one indie book or one creator-owned book uh, every week. And uh, this is uh, one of two that I've got this week. Right on. Yeah, I've got two as well. Walking Dead is my other one, as we've already talked about. And then uh, I guess the next thing we'll talk about here for me mm -hmm. is your other creator-owned book in your stack. That's true. Um, I don't know if you guys have been reading this or not, but this 27 um, from Image uh, by Charles Soule and Renzo Podesta, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, I kind of... Uh, I've got lots of friends who are musicians, so you know that whole. I, I remember uh, my friend uh, Steve uh, once told me Steve, the lead singer of the Beggars, who did the theme song for for comics and more hair. Um, he once told me just you know weeks leading up to his 27th birthday, he's like, man, he goes, I'm a little nervous. He goes, this is gonna go one way or the other. Either I'm gonna end up being a huge musician and everyone's gonna love my stuff, but I die next week, or I get nowhere and I just continue to have fun with my music. So, uh, you know, there's that whole uh, idea of everyone in the rock stars dying at 27. Right. And this is sort of different, where he now has these 27 abilities, and when he uses them, then he dies. Right. All these multiples of nine and all this math, and really kind of a fun book. I kind of like it. I like the rock star element. I like the superhero element. I like the, you know, the weird demon element. Mm -hmm. Kind of a fun book. And, you know, they're riffing on uh, Jimi Hendrix yeah. on the cover. I, uh, I, I'm also getting that book this week. Uh, I, I kind of came to this party a little late. Okay. Uh, I do remember reading the solicits for this, not not very closely. Uh, I thought the idea of all of these great rock stars dying at 27 and that being some sort of exclusive club uh, seemed kind of interesting, but um, I didn't know that I was enough of a music fan or knew enough about music to uh, to really be able to get into the book. And then after it came out and sold out, and uh, first and second issues went into second printing. Immediately. Um, I, I started hearing that it, it's really not, it's not a rock and roll book. Correct. It's, it, I mean, that's kind of a, a big theme, but the it's way, got... Sports Night is not a show about sports. It's, it's got yeah. magic in it. It's got numerology. It's, uh, 
you know, it almost seems like it could be a, a Grant Morrison book. It's just some some kind of crazy sci-fi. I think you're just stuff. comparing everything to Grant Morrison. Every, tonight. Everything is Grant. Like Morrison. Axe Cop, right? it's totally like it was written by Grant Morrison or a six-year-old. <laughs> is it any different? What did uh, Grant Morrison write like when he was six? But uh, anyway, this is a very accessible book. You don't need to uh, have a lot of musical knowledge for it. It's just an interesting uh, sci-fi magic alternate realities, gods and goddesses. Uh, it's it's just some some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, some pretty wild artwork also. Yes. Um, it's a little hit and miss. Uh, very angular, but uh, the coloring is great. And I also really dig. The oversized, I guess this is called the Golden Age format. Yes, I love that. That uh, Image did also on their next issue project books. Yep, um, and uh, also uh, Cowboy Ninja Viking yep. was another one, and Iron Siege. And uh, just absolutely fantastic covers, too. Oh, and gorgeous. Covers. And I, I like that format because I, I just like it being a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm constantly making jokes about how, man, you know, when I was a kid, when I would read the, uh, the, the Sunday Funnies, I mean, the pages were so much bigger because they were about this big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> could be that my arms were just about this big. But uh, I, I like that. The whole idea of it being a little bit bigger it makes me feel a little bit more like a kid when I kind of spread it out and look at it a little bit better and with a more detailed eye, I guess. I like that. And uh, one more thing that I like about it a lot, non-glossy pages. Yes. Good old-fashioned yeah, Paper. Matte, Imagine that. Paper that you can look at under a light without uh, having to avoid the glare. Yes. So yes, that was, that was my stack. That's that's what I got. What else do you still got in um, there? Well, I've got also uh, in the Grant Morrison vein. It's Grant Morrison night here at the Weekend Geek. <laughs> um, Batman Incorporated. Uh, I've I've really enjoyed this book a lot. Uh, I did not understand the need for him to move to a new book, but it is a very different book. It's a very different vibe. It almost feels a little less. Grant Morrison-y than Batman okay. and Robin did. Okay, makes sense. Uh, yes, it's actually pretty linear. Um, it's it's a fun Batman. It's a it's a throwback. Uh, I've, I've heard it described as kind of a somewhat more serious take on the Batman TV show. Um, okay, but yeah, I mean this is a Batman that, that's out there traveling the world, doing fun stuff, getting it on with Catwoman. Uh, it's it's not a dark, brooding creature of the night, if that's the Batman that you're looking for. Okay. Uh, go read Detective Comics, but if you want a Batman that's that's fun and enjoying being Batman, uh, give Batman Incorporated a try. And then the last thing I've got is Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, this is the prelude to the death of Spider-Man. I thought like six or seven issues that are a prelude to. Uh, it's I like the third Spider-Man issue. Yeah, and then they um, have the, the Ultimate Avengers versus Ultimates. I'm wondering what's going on with that. Um, I've I've been on board with the Ultimate Universe since day one. Uh, okay. I, I actually, when I first heard about it, I did not think it was a horrible idea. I thought it was kind of an interesting idea. Okay. It has certainly become something very different than it was before. I think, uh, I think most of the Ultimate Universe has kind of lost some of its charm, but Ultimate Spider-Man is still pretty solid. Okay. And I will give Bendis the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, the man has done 155 issues. In these days when people complain about, you know, no one staying on a book for a long time. Right. You know, he and Bagley broke, you know, now have the record. 155 consecutive issues. Well, not Bagley. No, Bagley and, he, and him broke the record of standing oh, on Jack. Oh, gotcha. Bagley. Okay. And, uh, and, but he's, Bendis but he's is still, still standing strong. Um, 155 issues. It's still pretty solid. Uh, I, I like the fact that this is a Spider-Man that has not changed or grown since uh, the first issue. Uh, you know, Ditko always wanted Spider-Man to stay in high school forever, like Archie. That and, was essentially why he quit, right? Um, there's a lot of no one's. Well, Ditko's never said there's a lot of reasons enough. why, but I guess that's one of one of many reasons. And it's interesting that this is kind of taking that approach. Uh, Bendis described Ultimate Spider-Man as the worst sophomore year ever. Uh, 155 month long sophomore year sounds pretty horrible to me. It does sound pretty miserable, um, yes. But uh, I'm curious to see what's going on. Uh, I think they just announced recently that the actual death issue is going to be polybagged like the Fantastic Four Death of the Human Torch issue. Uh, so you can run out and buy two. You know, I'm, I'm not going to blame Bendis for a marketing gimmick. No, uh, he's no. got he's got a story in here. I don't think this is going to go uh, 
where people are expecting. I'm betting it's not even really a death, that it's more a, an apparent death or something like that. I think they're okay. not going to. And that's just my feeling. But whatever they do, uh, I'm on board. Um, when they switched it over from Ultimate Spider-Man to Ultimate Comic Spider-Man, I jumped off for a little bit, came back on. The, the numbering's back. The, the book's back on, on track. The, uh, the so artist not shaped like a basketball anymore. They, they gave him a haircut. Uh, Chris Somney and, uh, is, is the artist on this particular book, uh, who uh, was on the late lamented Thor Mighty Avenger. Oh, um, yes. Sarah yes, Pacelli yes. Is, is the other artist that's been on this book, both fantastic artists. Um, this is probably not a good place to start. Okay. But, uh, you know, if you've, been, if you've been getting it for a while, I think it's probably still a good one to keep... Uh, on with. So that's right. my stack. All right. So now what we would like to advise everyone, go over, we mentioned some creator-owned books tonight. Um, so why don't you also go over to the uh, creator-owned blog. It's creator, uh, creator hyphen owned. Creator-owned dot blogspot.com. Uh, that's done by Chris Smits of the, of the Zod Complex. Yep. Every week he focuses on all of the creator-owned books that, uh, that are coming out and certainly uh, Walking Dead, Jennifer Blood, and 27 were part of that. Um, now, he also mentioned uh, what Guarding the Globe and, and Starborn by the Stan Lee and Little Depressed Boys, Spawn. Uh, uh, I know he was pushing uh, the finals, Resurrected, Vertigo, Vertigo Resurrected Finals. Yeah, with, by uh, Will Pfeiffer and Jill Thompson. Uh, so, I, I actually do like. And there's a review of that on the, the, the blog. I do like this seven ninety nine kind of sort of mini trade format that DC has been doing. I think that's a great way to bring some older material back to light. Absolutely, and, uh, and make it affordable. People turn on, yeah, exactly. Uh, a couple other interesting books out this week: Sarah Palin versus the World, with some Love that nice cover. Scott Pilgrim style uh, artwork on the inside. Uh, I, since I don't read Scott Pilgrim, I did see and like the movie. Uh, I don't know if certainly. I get it, but it uh, it certainly looks pretty interesting. Um, yeah, for anyone who's looking to, for a little lampooning of, of Sarah Palin, as if we haven't gotten enough of that, Sarah Palin versus the world. Yep, and uh, it's also a big Captain America week. There's uh, three Captain America books coming out this week. Uh, First 13, Hail Hydra and the Korvac Saga. Yeah, the Korvac Saga is great, too. I like that. Uh, great cover. Yeah. Cap knocking out Galactus, or at least punching him in the lip. For whatever that's worth. I'm a big fan of the original uh, Korvac saga. I have not been trying any of these. I don't know okay. what the, the basic premise is. but uh, I think they've been kind of going back. Let me see if this is sort of like that. Uh, yeah, this one doesn't look as, as kiddish as the Infinity Gauntlet thing that they had done. But it's, it's almost like they're revisiting these old tales and kind of trying to make them uh, all ages friendly. Interesting. Well, yeah, what else? Uh, we were looking at a couple other things. Oh, and you know what? I'd like to mention, which I think is really interesting, Clint is out this week as well. And while I'm not a huge Mark Miller fan, I like the throwback to kind of the Warrior magazine, the sort of anthology magazine. And we lost, uh, you know, we lost Wizard, which is not something I'm particularly sad about. It's got a magazine that actually focuses on comics and not just all the nonsense. There's, you know, you got some, some story pages from Kick-Ass 2 in here, which oh. it's uh, from issue 2, which is not even out yet through Icon. Uh, you got some Nemesis in here. Looks like he's going to reprint some stuff from The Pro by Bar Garth Ennis about a superhero hooker. Um, so, yeah, check that out as well. Um, also, this stuff is also all creator-owned. Okay. And, you know, it's interesting. You've got that, which is kind of a, a throwback. Sigil, Venom, and uh, one of the last throwbacks this week that I wanted to mention is right over there. Uh, Marvel Onslaught Unleashed. Yeah, they just on, can't, Onslaught keep, Unleashed they can't keep them dead. They no. can't keep them gone. Uh, it does seem like it has gravity, uh, the Mike Norton, Sean McKeever creation, uh, which I like quite a bit. Um, and Sean McKeever's a nice guy. I, I've not read anything Onslaught since, uh, since the first since, time. Since the original. I, right. I don't know what's going on. I just find it interesting that they, uh, they can't keep him dead. Right. Well, and even if we're going to talk about throwbacks, this Age of X looks a lot yeah. like the Age of Apocalypse. So you also got that currently going. Right. So if, you're, if you loved that... A lot of people uh, that like that original story are saying this is fun. It's different. It's not Age of Apocalypse. Mm. But, you know, what? Marvel says they have so many Earths anyway. So they yeah. just keep doing all kinds of fun and odd things there. 
So, uh, so oh, that I just noticed uh, X twenty three also has a pirate theme this week. Oh, pirates! Yeah, pirates, yar. It can't be. I like that cover. X twenty three is a sexy pirate lady. All right, with uh, with claws. With claws. Yeah, can't we'll beat that. No, you can't. Sexy pirate Wolverine. <laughs> Everybody wins. Do do we? Do we? <laughs> when you put it like that, now I feel dirty. <laughs> you should feel dirty. You're a dirty man. All right, well, I think that's the, uh, that's the Week in Geek, and uh, thanks, thanks a lot for joining us. We'll uh, go out to your comic book store today, pick up some books, pick up uh, either the books we mentioned or something else. Uh, and, uh, come back here next week for the next Week in Geek.